Hey guys, this is SFN. 10.0 is finally here and I'm here to run down the changes that uh, that you guys will be able to see and stuff like that. So first off, it is the... Oh, there's some guy popping out. It's a library of... It's a library. There's no ad new additions to the library if I remember correctly. I think there is actually. Nope, there isn't. But uh, every single time you clear a you clear a set of dungeons then you get one orb so there is a lot 68 so there's about 300 at uh, 300 plus including the uh, secret stuff like the Fenrir X stuff I think that also counts as an extra orb so uh, take your time to clear them you won't be able to clear them one day and of course because you're limited to nine uh, to at least five per day so slowly do it when you have stamina to grab those orbs you can get up to over 300 and if you want to get them now for future stuff like uh, in terms of the evangelians stuff then by all means do that uh, second thing second thing uh, when you go to the banners uh, go to the monster you see in the second one is where you usually see your monster uh, level up and stuff this time they combine the two of the level up and the evolution so all you gotta do is switch the tabs on the top so the first one is for fusing your uh, fusing your materials and then the second one is for evolution ascension and transcension so that's one change so it's easier you take all those ones together next one there is a new item there's two new items that I want to talk about and you get them throughout the fourth anniversary so this is the login stamp that you get uh, every time you log in after the reset and you see there is a giant there's this new thing with the divine shell in it this is a dragon divine uh, divine dragon gem divine dragon gem uh, what that does is it will automatically transcend one monster that you have so instead of using dragon gems divine shells and stones and shells this one item will uh, transcend that monster for you next one is this blue uh, this blue one this blue one is a continue uh, continue can so basically you use it to continue a stage instead of using one orb uh, you only get one of them during this stage and you can farm them you can farm the divine dragon gem or the continue can and then this one is just the ableberry can so that's the new item I think that's most in terms of 10 the other one is that once you clear a quest then you'll see the actual luck if you auto fuse but the main thing of 10.0 and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are wondering uh, my opinion on it and it is the badge the soul badges I think the soul badges so and there's that guy coming up again this guy uh, anyways uh, that's part of the fourth uh, anniversary stuff so the Soul badges on the third panel on the third banner or tab whatever had you is the soul banner page and you have five you have five soul badges one of each element and you can only attach one per that element so light has to attach it to a light monster etc etc and you see on this bottom uh, this bottom box is my badge power for that specific badge now each badge is different and we'll get to batch powers later but it all depends on the luck of all your six star monsters not including like max peas dragon gems king morlings and stuff like that so it's five uh, so it's six star actual six star monsters and it could be luck ones like my uh, kakao to all the way to my max lux in my whole box they all count it up for you so let's attach it to one of my monsters let's go with the light one Let's attach it to let's attach it to my Lila. So every time you attach a badge to a monster or vice versa, how you, however you think about it, it will cost uh, soul spirits, and these uh, this will cost five thousand. So let's do it. I don't think it costs when I first attach it. Let me see. When you first attach it, it doesn't cost anything. But if you want to switch, so let's say I want to switch to Mozart. Now it will cost me five thousand to actually switch it up, so you can't really, uh, you know, just freely switch it. 
So let's get to the actual badge part. So let's tap Mr. Lila. And on the third one, and you see there's soul skills and then there's slots. And let's actually press the button. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I pressed the actual banner. So the actual yellow, yellow title of the badge. And then you see a set. You see a list of slots and soul skills, so it'll take a lot of a lot of soul spirits to actually unlock a lot of slots, and it also requires badge 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 powers. I think it's listed on the official site of how much badge power you need for opening slots, but I think it's all about spirits for the most part. So I can up to four. Uh, it will take thirty one thousand. Sadly, I only have 29,000, but anyways, let's set up one skill. Now, there are a lot of skills out there. There's a lot, and most of it, it's pretty self-explanatory, like meditation. This is all about debuffs in terms of things that don't that skips your turn, like sleep, confused, paralyzed, depending on the actual, uh, depending on the actual class of it, it will and nullify more stuff and basically needle panels here file pi fire pillars from like arcadia this one is hp4 attack so you know, kind of is like four four hp attack this will not know it but it will give you more hp afterwards so it won't actually turn you into four hp automatically this one is heal wall master it will every time you hit a uh, hit a healing wall it will give you more hp per hit and these five right here are slayers, so this does up to 1.25 on fire monsters. And these guys require a lot of match power. Like I have a lot of max lux, and it requires 5,000 batch skills. Just look at your own box and see how much batch skills, uh, batch power you actually have. I think these are the most expensive ones and requires the most. So uh, you'll see how far you are in terms of needing to max lux. This one is for ability lock. This one is bump combo, lock, defense down, defense, uh, defense down, attack down, speed down, and this one is the last one is magma. So, if I if I were to use Lila, and the first one that I really want to have on Lila is the bump combo lock. No, just because her bump combo is really strong. So let's set it. It will cost ten thousand spirits. So it does cost a lot. To actually set it so make sure you choose carefully before you set anything but uh, I'm gonna set it right here now if you want to change so let's say I want to change it to somebody else something else so let's change it to at uh, the bump combo at uh, the ability lock because you know she has two ability two abilities and they're both strong and then the healing prayer is also strong so I'll change it and and you'll change it and it'll cost souls again and it'll cost uh, I think this is the original amount but one more thing is that if you want to change back to the one that you already unlocked so let's say I change it to the ability lock one ability lock no to uh, back to the bump combo lock and I will have to pay full price again to actually change it so be careful of whether uh, you want to uh, you know change one and stuff like that so it's also I think it's also better to just open a slot slot and just have ladder to have both of them in my opinion so a play, uh, a play lock now I have 2,000 left now in order to gain spirits you have to play quests and you see under my current soul right here there is a daily limit of 1,000 and 1,000, you get them through quests. You can do it through the library. You can do it through other quests. Uh, whatever has, let's go to the events. Whatever has a, where is it? Are these actually part of it? No, they're not part of it. They're not actually soul spirit dungeons. Uh, so there are a lot in the library. I think all of them are in the library. So the extremes here. So as long as you see that little dot here, that uh, the soul spirit 
uh, Soul Spirit like logo there, then you'll gain you gain Soul Spirits by playing that. You get a thousand per, uh, not a thousand. You get a hundred per quest, and then I think there's sometimes where you get lucky and you get double or triple. But you know there is a daily cap, so be careful. So make sure you choose carefully. Uh, choose carefully of what you, uh, who you want to add, uh, add a badge to, and what kind of abilities that you want. And let's see. Wow, actually, what the hell? There is actually more <laughs> sacred grounds coming up. Anyways, uh, I don't think sacred. Oh, sacred grounds is also part of the spirit stuff. So that's mostly in terms of badge. If you have any more questions, then comment below. But uh, I do want to say this. In terms of who is the best and is badges really worth it? Badges are not worth, uh, in my opinion, in the general sense. For me, it's kind of like able berries, and even able berries are a little bit more worth than badges. Uh, because all these skills are really niche, in my opinion. So let's just let's just run down the list here. A lot of them are really niche, so for example, Fire Pillar. One, uh, Fire Pillar one is only for Arcadia because Arcadia is only out. And then Needle Panel has Yamato Takiru and Kane. So it's really niche for specific, and even so, you have to put it on specific monsters to make it work because not every single monster can go to Arcadia. And even if you slot it, slot that Fire Pillar into that monster that doesn't work on Arcadia, it doesn't mean that he'll work in Arcadia either. So if you really want to go niche, it's only for niche monsters, and I don't think you really want to put it on uh, unless you're really farming for that monster. So if you're farming for Arcadia, you might want that one monster that can nullify all the fire pillar damage, then by all means. Or if you want to get through 31st stage, uh, get through 31st stage and Arcadia, I would suggest uh, Athena. Athena, because Athena, I'm not going to, I don't even have, uh, I don't want to slot Athena into that badge yet. But you can put Athena into that blue badge, and then you can slot in Fire Pillar Null, which makes her very powerful in Arcadia, as well as the Magma Null. So the very last one, the very very last one, right here, down here, uh, that will make sure she is very powerful in the 36th stage of the Tower of Champions. Like I said, it's only for specific dungeons and if you're fine with just clearing it the normal way then you really don't have a need of uh don't really have a need of actually using these badge powers i think it'll be really fun uh, after i get <laughs> after i stock up on more, more spirits is to have one slayer so for example i have let's say let's have a dark monster let's put pandora because i'll probably use uh put pandora in actually that won't really make it really fun but uh let's put some kind of slayer in but you but anyways put uh put some light slayer in here and now on all four of these slots all four of these slots i'll put the other attribute slayer so basically i have a quote unquote fire slayer water slayer wood slayer and a dark slayer in one monster Technically, they're not slayers because the max you can get is 25%, 1.25, whereas the normal slayer is 1.5. Either way, you can. This is the closest you'll get to a all slayer, uh, all slayer monster. That's like a kind of a fun way of playing Monster Strike, I guess, in terms of making a monster. It does give you some more viability for other stuff, but it's really niche. Like all the stuff is really niche, and I don't really see the point in slotting slotting and badging up your monsters this early so slowly work your way and only do it if you have the luxury of uh of spirits and stuff and i won't be doing some kind of like ranking of which one you should badge first or which skill you have to badge first uh it's only for niche dungeons and i don't really see the point of having them unless you're farming uh, for example if you want to farm Yamato Takeru Kai then Tampopo with the null panel, uh, needle panel null would be great but 
it's just one dungeon and I don't really want to make a ranking where it's like Yamato Takedo 0 viability over Arcadia viability and then you have 31st, uh, 36th floor viability and so on and so forth it's there's no it doesn't really help you in the general sense of the game and helping you clear one dungeon it doesn't really make that much sense to me because there's a lot of other dungeons and I can I, I want to try to help clear you all the dungeons and these badge powers don't really help you clear all the dungeons any easier just like how able berries that's why I don't really farm able berries that's why you see in a lot of my videos I don't have able berries on all my monsters and even so like like outside of genius and like scores like if you're metal farming then that's useful in some sense outside of genius I don't really care much about psychic on like a Lila even though it does help you but in the overall context that extra bump, bump combo power won't help you win games uh, dr dramatically like drastically so that's why I don't think badge powers are that useful it's just something to add on to help people to max luck and help people to uh, to help uh, to you know to farm more unless you're saying you have a friend of three three guys and they all have five pillar nulls five fire pillar nulls and they all want to farm Arkea then sure why not that's something you can do with your friends if you have friends that, that want to do that then that will be fun but outside of that if you're playing solo or if you're going on co-op and uh, going on uh, billboards uh, BBS boards then I don't see the point of just doing this stuff so that's my opinion on <laughs> on uh, on badge powers but that's pretty much it about 10.0 I uh, hope you guys like and subscribe if you have any questions then comment below but that's pretty much it for me I hope you guys like and subscribe and see you guys next time bye bye